Hello and welcome to this demonstration of Synaptic. My name's Adrian and in this demonstration we'll briefly discuss who we are and what we do. I'll then demonstrate Synaptic's three main categories of features, these being communication, entertainment and features for remaining independent. For those who don't know, we design and develop software for Android smartphones and tablets that helps make them easy to use when you've got sight loss. So all of our devices include uh, speech output, uh, voice control, magnification, large print text, clear menus, um, and because of all of those things, um, they're suitable for any level of sight loss. We generally supply phones and tablets with our software pre-installed and all ready to go, but if someone's got uh, an Android device already, um, you can just buy the software and install the software onto that existing device. Our phone and tablet packages, gen which include the, the software and you know the, the phone or tablet, generally cost between three to five hundred pounds for, for a typical device. Um, and then we've got a range of devices that are different sizes. Um, have di different cameras, different amounts of storage, etc. So um, they, they vary in price based on that. All of our devices come fully set up and ready to be used straight out of the box. It'll come with a, a SIM card uh, with £10 credit on it uh, initially. Um, the email is set up with an initial email address. WhatsApp is set up with an initial setup. Um, and the idea being that, you know, you can get the, get this phone or tablet out of the box, turn it on and just get, get on straight away with, with actually using it and not have to spend ages kind of setting things up. If you have got your own SIM card already, well, you can just take ours out and put yours in. Same with the email address. If you've got an email address already, we'll just um, delete our email settings and put yours in, in instead and use your own um, existing email address. Everything comes with a free hour of training um, so the end user can spend that hour getting up, up and running um, or they can use it for a particular task perhaps they you know they, they really want to use the tablet for um, I don't know the banking or shopping or something so they can use that hour to kind of get on get on board with that further to that hour we've got a free lifetime technical support so um, we've got a couple of people here on the phones and you can, uh, the users can call us up and we'll help with, with, with anything um, that, that we can on that, uh, on that device. And we could also remote control that device um, from here. Uh, the user just needs to tap something on the screen, give us a security number, and then we can remote control that device um, either for training or to um, troubleshoot and, and fix, a, fix a problem. And everything comes with two years of, of warranty and... Uh, um, Two weeks money back guarantee as well so there's a there's a good um it's, it's a no quibble money back guarantee so uh, when you receive the device you've then got two weeks to return it and you can return it to us for any reason if, if it turns out you don't it doesn't work for you like i mentioned at the start the synaptic features fit into kind of three categories of communication entertainment and remaining uh, independent so what we'll do now um is we'll have a look at each of, each of those in turn. Um, we'll start off with communication, and there's quite a few features in communication. In fact, there's quite a few features in all of them. So what we'll do is we'll pick two or three that, um, that highlight that whole kind of section and how they all work. So just, just by doing two or three, you'll, you'll get a really good idea about how um, Synaptic works and how all those particular features um, work together. So first of all, then we'll have a look at communication features. So there's several things here, um, calls, text messages, Skype, emails, WhatsApp, Zoom, uh, letter writing and printing, which is one that kind of gets overlooked and forgotten about, uh, and then Facebook and Twitter. So we'll, we'll pick um, three or so out of here and, and, and look at those. So we'll look at calls, uh, text messages and WhatsApp. Yeah, and that will pretty much cover uh, the main main of it. So what I'll do now is I'll just turn on my other camera. 
so yes so what we'll do here is i've <clears throat> i've got a phone here uh, that i'll demonstrate um synaptic on but the menu options are identical um, on a tablet as well the only slight change there is between um, a tablet and a phone is that there are two types of tablet there's a tablet that can accept a sim card and a tablet that can't have a sim card so if it can't have a sim card these top two options aren't available to make a call and text messages um, but if the tablet can accept a sim card then those two options um, appear. So that's the only difference there is between the, between the phones and the tablets. So, right, let's crack on and have a look um, at uh, the first thing, which is making a call. And during the, the journey of making a call and looking at text messages, we'll also have a look at um, voice control and dictation as well. So we can, um, you know, make a call by uh, issuing a voice command and we can also dictate text instead of typing it into a text message or an email etc so we'll, we'll have a brief look at those in within these, these first two options so the way that synaptic works is twofold so if you've got enough usable vision to actually select uh, to, to see the menu option and select it then you can you can just tap it make call menu page one of two and the next menu then appears. If you're relying more on speech feedback, what you can do is place your finger on the screen and slide it up and down the screen. And as you slide it up and down, it'll read out the option that your finger is currently on. And then to select that option, you just lift your finger off the screen and it's then selected for you. So if I do that on, on this menu, um, I'll start at the bottom um, and then move up to the top where the make a call option is. And as I move it up, you'll, you'll hear it read out uh, each option. Emails, 19 unread. Skype, text messages, 26 unread. Make a call from your address book or dial a number. So that, that's the option that I want. So I'll just release my finger from the screen. Make call menu, page one of two. And that's then selected the, um, that, that option and we get another menu. And then it's just repeat the process again. <clears throat> so I, we're working towards the dial number option on here. So I'll just do the same kind of thing again. I'll just move up the menu. Recently address book, dial number, type in number. And release my finger again. Number pad, dial number. And then we got our nice big bright number pad for dialing a number. Same applies on here. So if you've got enough usable vision to, to um, to, to, to see and tap the numbers, then you can just do that. Zero, one, nine, one. Or again, yeah, I can place my finger on the screen, move it around to find the next digit that I need and then release my finger and it will uh, then, then type that digit. So we'll do that. Five. So I want to find um, the nine. Eight, nine. So there's the nine, I'll release my finger. Nine. Nine's dialed, that nine digit is, is then typed in. Do it again. Five. And we'll Four. find the one. One. There's the one. One. And that's then. So you just repeat that process and build up the number. Um, if you want to hear uh, the, the, the number so far, you just move, slide to the top of the screen. To telephone number 019191. Um, and that tells me what we've got so far. Um, we to then uh, make the call um, there's a green dial button in the in the bottom left of the screen and we tend to um, always keep the action kind of button in the same place so where, wherever possible bottom left is the kind of place to go to do the thing to send the email to, to make the call etc so if I, I won't press it but if i were to press the bottom left now the call would be made and it would start ringing and, and, and off we go to cancel out of this when we're finished, we, we've got a standard um, cancel and go back button on all screens. So every single screen in Synaptic, if you're done with that screen and you wanna go back, the top left-hand corner is a cancel and go back button. It's a big red cross. And if I, if I put my finger on it. Cancel and go back. It says cancel and go back. Make call menu, page one of two. It takes us back a stage to the, to the make call menu in this case. If I do it again. Cancel and go back. Main menu, page one of five. And then I'm back at the, at the main menu again. So 
you can't kind of get lost in synaptic or go somewhere accidentally that you can't get out of because always always top left you've got this red cross to cancel and go back and take you back to the to the previous stage so let's just have another look at make make call menu make page call menu. one of two so in addition to the dial number that we just saw we can obviously pick someone from our address book address book select contact page one of six so i can slide my finger again if, I, if i've got enough usable vision i can just tap the person that i want to call or i slide my finger adrian host alan host albert O seven nine nine. i won't select anyone in this case um, but you get the idea and then there's a big yellow arrow at the bottom that goes onto the next page so there's several pages of, of contacts Select contact page two of six. So this is the second page where I've got some more uh, very random people listed there. Link call menu page one of two. Uh, in addition to the, the number pad and the address book, um, there is uh, a list of people who you have recently called or have recently called you, and you can pick from them to dial again. Or in your address book, you can actually flag people um, as being important contacts and anyone who's flagged as being important will list up on this menu directly So I've, I've set myself to be an important contact. So it's here directly on this uh, Make call menu so I can get quick access to it Right cancel and go back out of there cancel and go back main menu page one of five I mentioned briefly about a voice control um, and this is a good time to uh, to show it because in addition to the the options that we just saw for the address book and using the the number pad um, we can actually ask synaptic to call adrian and providing that adrian is in the address book it will actually make the call now there's a separate voice control option that we have to use to do this and what most people do is if, if they're using voice control quite a lot is they'll move this voice control option up to the top of the of the main menu so it's the first item so it's then really quick to get access to, because by default, it's on page two or three. So main menu, main menu, page three or five. It's on page three, it's here, voice control. Voice control, voice control, tap screen, then speak command after the beep. For help say, what can I say? So um, if you don't know the, the commands, you can't think of them, you can tap the screen and say, what can I say? And it will give you a list of the various commands that you can say. So it's things like call Adrian, send text message to Bob, um, send email to Fred, search the internet for sausages, um, or you can say menu. So you can say entertainment menu, and it'll go to the entertainment menu and show you the, the options in there. I mean, you can ask it the time and various other things um, as well. So for this example, we're just going to make it do a telephone call. So I'll go to call my, um, my other phone. Voice control. Call Adrian. Dialing. And then I'll just cancel it with the big red button at the bottom. And Voice control. Tap screen, then speak command after the beep. For help, say what can I say? So yeah. So the way it works is just tap the screen, and then you say one of the one of the commands, um, and uh, and off you go. Okay. So we'll close out of there. Cancel and main menu. Main menu page two of main menu page one of five. Okay. So that was calls and uh, voice control. We'll now have a look at text messages. Text messages, text menu, page one of two. So we've got the text menu up. So on the text menu, we can do things like compose a new text message, look at all of our messages, look at unread ones, look at ones that we've sent, look at messages that maybe have failed to send. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll have a look at all messages and then we'll reply back to one of those messages and, and compose a suitable reply. All messages, all messages, page one of 10. So same kind of story here. So this is a list of all of our text messages that we've got. If I've got enough usable vision, I can just select one and then deal with that, reply to it, delete it, etc. Or I could run my finger down the screen. New message from 1179. 
Tuesday, 24 November at 14.29. So as I, as I run my finger down the screen, it, it reads out a summary of that, of that message, who, is, who, it, who it was from and when it was received, etc. So we've got a few pages worth. I'll just find a particular message. All messages, page 2 of 10. All messages, page 3 of 10. So I want this message here. From Adrian. Thursday, 15 October at 12.46. Or release message my finger. menu, page one of two. So when I've picked a particular message, I get a, I get a menu so that I can deal with that message. And the options are to read the message, to reply, to delete, etc. So in this case, I'll select the one to read the message. Read message, 15 October, 12.46. Thanks for your message. See you soon, grinning face. So the message is displayed on screen in, the, in your selected colours, nice, nice and big. <clears throat> All of this can be changed. So if you prefer different colours or you want it smaller or bigger text, that can all, be, can all be changed. So when you're reading any kind of message, email or text message, um, those colours and that text size will, will um, show. There's some little buttons at the top that allow you to read the whole thing. If you just want it to read the whole message, it might be a few pages long. Um, you can just press that button, it will read the whole lot out. Um, or there is a line view mode, which is quite interesting, that converts this, this message, which is like a paragraphed kind of view of the message. It converts it into a single line of text. Line view one. And this single line of text, you can then use two fingers on the screen to change the size of it, to zoom in and out. And then what you can do is you can slide your finger left or right on the screen and that single line of text will then, will then scroll. And the further you slide to the left, the faster it goes that way. And the, fur and the further you go to the right, the faster it scrolls back the other way. So this is great for um, like eccentric reading where someone's got a patch of vision perhaps. Um, so instead of them having to move the device around that patch of vision to, um, to read it out, you can put this in the patch of vision and then just use um, your finger to control the text moving through that patch and read the read the text that way. Okay, stop it there. And we'll cancel and go back out. Cancel and go back. Message menu, page one of two. So that was reading the message. I want to reply. So I'll select the reply option. Reply. Keyboard. Type message. So now the synaptic keyboard displays. Uh, the bottom half is a QWERTY keyboard. It can also be switched to an ABC keyboard if, if, uh, if, if needed. And the top half of the screen displays the message um, that we're typing. And again, we can pick the, how big we want this text to display um, at the top. We're a bit, the, the, the text for the keyboard is, is fairly fixed, but we can change, like I say, the, how big we want to see things in this, in this top section. So standard way if I've got enough usable vision to actually press the, the uh, letters on the keyboard I can just start typing capital H E L L O if if not I can slide my finger around the keyboard and it will then read out each letter and when I find the letter that I want I just release my finger so we'll put a space first space um, so I want the T H Y T. There's the T, let go. T. T is typed, and then we'll do the same for H. F, G, H, H, e. T, R, E, and Z, e. We'll have an R. E, R, R. And finally an E. Q, W, E. There's an e. e. Alternatively, we can use speech recognition. So whenever this keyboard displays, so when you're typing a text, typing an email, typing something to search the web for, typing something into your address, but wherever, wherever um, this displays, you can press uh, a little microphone button in the top right-hand corner. Speech recognition on off. Speech recognition mode on, press speak button at bottom of screen, then start speaking. Okay, so that then hides the, the keyboard and, in, and instead replaces it with some big, three big buttons. Uh, the main button of interest is the big speak one at the bottom. I press the speak button, I wait for the little beep, and then I speak um, the, the message instead of typing it. Speak. Hello, this is a test. Hello, this is a test. And then if I want to say some more and build up this message, then I just do the same again. 
And this is some more text. And this is some more text. And a little bit more. And a little bit more. So you just build your message up with that. You can also mix and match. So if you want to do a bit of typing. Speech recognition mode off. You can turn the speech recognition mode off. Full stop. Space. And then start typing. Capital e. L -L -L. something else so you can then just mix and match between the two to build up your message you can there are ways to to move about within this message and insert text or and um, you can just touch the top part and it will read out everything that you've typed so far text hello there hello this is a test and this is some more text and a little bit more hello yeah slightly bizarre message but you get the idea um so when we're done and we actually want to send our message the, the normal thing applies. Bottom left is usually where our kind of action button is. So bottom left is this big yellow send button. Send. Send reply page one of one. So it's just wanting to, to it's just giving you a little um, um, yes, no message here where you can say, yes, I do want to send this message or no, you don't, just in case you accidentally press that send button. So we'll select yes. Yes. Reply send. Message menu, page one of two. So that's then gone, and my phone's just beeped, and the message has arrived. So, okay. All messages, page three of ten. So I'll just cancel and go back. Text menu, page one of two. Main menu, page one of five. So emails is very, very similar um, to that. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just dip into emails very, very quickly. Emails, email menu, page one of three. So the email menu, very similar options on here to compose, inbox, or uh, inbox, just, just inbox on red. Um, so if I have a look at the inbox. Inbox, inbox, all messages, page one of nine. So exactly the same as text messages. You just um, scroll your finger down and it reads out a summary of each, of each email. Inbox, all messages, page two of nine. So good good old Blue Peter fashion. Here's one I've prepared earlier. Message from Adrian Seish. Subject, photos attached with attachment received Monday. Oh, two, no, email message menu, page one of three. So I can read that email if I, if I wish. Line you. Oh, line view line off. you off. So there's the message. Oh, two, November 1432. From Adrian Seish. Hi, here are those photos we spoke about. Okay. Kind. Email message menu, page one of three. So that was reading the email. I, I now want to have a look at the photos that have been attached. Email message menu, page two of three. So on the second page, there are some options to forward and save an option uh, for attachments. Attachments. Email attachments. Select a file, page one and of one. So this will list out any attachments on that email. Um, so it could be PDF documents, images, an MP3, whatever it, whatever it is, it'll be listed here. And then you just select the uh, appropriate one. So we'll have a, a look at the image of the dog here. JPEG image, view or save attachment, page one of one. So I can either view or save it, we'll select view. View, photo one of two, taken Monday 02 November at 1436. So there's the little full screen. dog there. Pinch and then because it's an image, we can just pinch and zoom and, and uh, you know, Make that make that bigger in the in the standard kind of way. Normal view. And then cancel and go back. Email attachments. Select a file, page one of one. Cat email message menu, page two of three. Inbox all messages, page two of nine. Email menu, page one. main menu, page one of five. Okay, so that was a brief uh, brief dip into into emails, but you can see everything works in the same in the same way. Um, so generally what we say to people is, is there, are, there are just two things you need to know to, to work, you know, 99% of Synaptic. <clears throat> One is slide your finger around the screen and find the option and let go. And the other is press the red cross in the, in the top left. Once you know those two, um, you're away. You can use almost all of it. Right, the final feature we'll look at in communication. Main menu, page two of five. Is something a little bit different, and that's WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp, <clears throat> um, unlike emails, where we can make our own um, uh, screens for it, WhatsApp, you have to use the WhatsApp app if you want to use it. There's no other, no other choice. So what Synaptic does is it automatically detects whenever a, an app or an Android screen 
is showing. And it turns on something called Synaptic Reader, which is basically just a voice for that app. So if I select WhatsApp. WhatsApp called Stop Synaptic Reader resumed. So as soon as I did that, you heard it said Synaptic Reader resumed, <clears throat> which means that the Synaptic Reader voice is now available to read out uh, this, this WhatsApp screen. So I can touch pieces of text. Status. And it will read those out to me. Um, if you're relying on speech, <clears throat> obviously touching the text isn't, isn't going to work. So you need a way of navigating through all of that screen and listening and interacting with it. So that can be done in two ways. You can either use some pretty standard gestures. So um, if you swipe the screen from left to right, Calls. it moves press, to the next to item on the screen and moves up and down, you know, and moves down and down and down, reading out as it goes. And if you want to move up, up the items on the screen, you swipe from right to left. Status, selected chats. And it'll move that way and move back the other way. Um, then to um, action something, to press a button or follow a link, whatever it might be on that screen, you then double tap the screen to press that button or, or follow the link. We, that, that can be quite, um, uh, certainly double tapping can be a real real problem because you have to double tap quite quickly and it, it actually can be a, a barrier to, to, to some people because they just can't get the, that double tap done in time and you have to remember gestures as well so that can get a bit complicated so what we did is we, we um, added some features into synaptic reader to make it a lot easier reading a screen like this so what we did is we converted, so whenever Synaptic Reader is running, reading out um, WhatsApp or some other app, the volume keys on the edge of the device become navigation keys. So now as I press volume down, if I press it once, status, it moves to the next volume thing on the screen, down to select. press it again, Calls. it then moves to the next thing on the screen, down to select. press it again, Adrian, the 24th of August, 2020. Hello, in list six items. So then that's moved on to, to the next thing. And then in order to um, press a button or follow a link, or in this case, to look at the chats in WhatsApp that I've had with myself again, um, you just long press the volume down button. And that does the same as doing a double tap that activates that option, presses that button. So if I now long press volume down, Type a message, edit box. That's then starting, that's then listed out all of the chats with Adrian. And then we can do the same again. Um, you can actually touch some text and it will read it out. The 12th of August, 2020, test message from Adrian, 1553, in list nine items. Or I can just press volume down. And hold to set the 24th of August, 2020. Hi, how's it going? You still okay to meet Friday, 9.34? So there, then I can use the, the volume buttons or the gestures, the swipes if needed to then move through all of the messages on that screen. And then um, at the end, you can then actually type a, type a new message as well. So the one extra thing that we, that we add in is that although this is the WhatsApp screen, we still um, superimpose a red cross in the top left. So there's still that standard way to come out of this app and back into Synaptic. So if I press that red cross in the top left. Cancel and go back button. It goes back to the previous WhatsApp. screen. Main menu, page two of five. And then back to the, to the main menu again. Main menu, page one of five. Okay, so that, that's the communication features. We'll move on then to entertainment, our, our next uh, group of features. So we've done communication. So for entertainment, we're talking about things like the music player, internet radio, uh, talking book player, <clears throat> watching freeview TV, BBC iPlayer, uh, YouTube and news feeds. So we'll pick um, internet radio, uh, TV, iPlayer and, and YouTube and we'll have a look at uh, each of those um, quickly. So, okay, so all the entertainment features are, are actually grouped into one uh, menu option. Main menu, page two of five. Main menu, page three of five. 
main menu, page four and five. So there's an entertainment option here. Entertainment, entertainment menu, select an option, page one over two. So we are going to select the second option down, which is internet radio. Music player, internet radio, please wait. Radio menu, page one of one. So in here, there's several thousand radio stations from across the world, um, all kind of preset here. Um, we can search for a particular genre of music or radio station name. We can uh, browse the stations by uh, like geographic location, or we can um, get access to our favorites and just list out our favorite stations and play it from there. So what I'll do here is I'll select the browse option. Browse. Select country, page one of 13. Select UK. UK. Select region, page one of seven. So there's a seven pages there instead of regions. So this is northeast, south, west, UK, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there are two special regions at the top, uh, one called BBC Local and one called BBC National, where we just group together all of the BBC stations. So we'll just have a look at uh, BBC Local. BBC Local. Select station page one of 11. So there's 11 pages of uh, BBC Local stations. You can search through those or you can just run your finger and, and, uh, and find the particular one you want. So we'll just run our finger down and find um, BBC Cambridgeshire. BBC Berkshire. BBC Bristol. BBC Cambridgeshire. Oh. Local BB connecting. That one. Please wait. Amazing box with end at middle. Watch temporary traffic lights as well. And in Britain, cancel the going Select station page one of eleven. And it just starts playing straight away. Um, so there's no setup, nothing to do. You just pick the pick the station and, and off it goes. And it's dead, dead simple. And it gives you a, like a like I say a selection of stations from around the world. Uh, there's there's literally thousands in there. Cancel and go back. Select region page one of cancel and go back. Select country page cancel and go back. Radio menu page one of one. Entertainment okay. menu. Select an option page one of two. So we'll now have a look at uh, the uh, free view TV option. So this is this is just UK stations. Watch UK TV, UK TV channels, page one of 10. <clears throat> so they're all listed out there, all the common free view stations. So we will just pick, oh, I don't know, ITV or something. BBC one, BBC two, ITV one, ITV one, landscape view, loading, keep playing. So it tells me it's in landscape view. So I changed my phone to landscape view. So you knew that if your kind didn't have milling all the way around. UK TV channels, page one of ten. So it just starts playing that particular channel that we uh, that we selected, and then as as normal, there's a red cross in the top left that we can select to to close that channel down and return back to our list of channels. Cancel and go back. Entertainment menu. Okay. Entertainment menu. Select an option, page two of two. Um, BBC iPlayer is the other thing we'll have a look at here. So this allows us to catch up um, on the last seven days worth of uh, TV and radio programmes. BBC iPlayer, iPlayer menu, TV or radio, page one and of one. So I'll select TV. TV, iPlayer TV. Select station, page one of three. I'll select, I don't know, BBC two. BBC two, BBC two. Select day, page one of two. Then it asks me to select the day. I'll select yesterday. Yesterday, loading programs. Please wait. By player programs, page one of six. So there's six pages there of uh, programs from BBC Two yesterday. I'll select one at random. Money for nothing. Saving lives at sea. Zero. Saving lives Landscape at sea. Landscape view. Please wait. We're an island nation, drawn to the scene of loading programs, by player programs, page one of six. So, yep, super simple. The program just starts playing once you've selected it. And, yep. and you can also pause and, and um, skip backwards and forwards through the, through the program as well. So, let's cancel and go back. BBC, by player TV, by player menu. TV, entertainment menu, select an option, page two of two. 
Okay, the last thing we'll have a look at in the entertainment is YouTube, um, which is... YouTube, YouTube menu, page one of one. <clears throat> and YouTube is just such a good resource. Um, people overlook it sometimes. Um, it's, it, I mean, it does have the, you know, your funny cat videos in there, but, but equally it has so many really useful um, bits of information, I mean, uh, and, and videos, everything from um, Pilates for the visually impaired to how you make an apple pie. Uh, there's so much in there that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's such a useful resource. So the way that it works in Snaptic is we have the YouTube menu. It's got a search option at the top where we can search for a particular video. Once we've watched one video, there's an option here to find similar and it will go, go and actually find similar videos. Um, or we can um, actually add our uh, last watched video to our list of favorites and then they're um, easily accessible. So we'll start off by searching. Search. Please type in your search words. So keyboard comes up so we can either type in our, um, our search words or we can use uh, speech recognition and dictate them. So we'll do that. Speech recognition mode speak. Cats. And then, as usual, bottom left is where the action is for our search button. Search. Please wait. YouTube videos. Select a video to play page one of eight. So the videos are listed. I can uh, scroll my finger down and listen to the uh, each one. So we'll just pick one. Baby cats, cute and funny cat. Cats will make you laugh your head off. Funny cat compilation. Okay, so we'll uh, <laughs> have a look at that Please one. Please wait. So I can turn this. Landscape. So I can watch it landscape or portrait and it's just playing now. Can, so we'll cancel that. Cancel and get synoptic. So if I particularly like that video and wanted to save it, YouTube. I can come back to the YouTube menu, go into favorites. Favorites, favorites, page one of one. I press the add button at the top here and that will just add it to these list of, of favorite options. And I've obviously done that before because there it is. Cancel and go back. YouTube menu, page one of one. Entertainment menu, select an option, page two of two. Okay, so that's the entertainment features. We will move on then, uh, lastly, and have a look at features for remaining independent. So this includes things like um, our digital magnifier, which converts the, the phone or tablet into a, a handheld digital magnifier, uh, the reading machine. Um, then you've got things like voice memos, notepad, web searching and web browsing for online shopping or finding out information, calendar and alarm clock, um, and then access to apps. So things like Be My Eyes, Audible, um, and the tr NHS, uh, track and trace app and things like that. Um, so we will have a look at the uh, the magnifier and reading machine and then have a look at uh, apps and uh, searching the web. Most of these are uh, located in the toolbox menu. Toolbox, toolbox menu, page one of four. So the first thing we'll have a look at is the uh, magnifier. Magnifier, magnifier menu, page one of two. So on the magnifier menu, we can use the magnifier or we can view um, images that we've saved from, from the magnifier. Um, so we'll just use the magnifier. Use magnifier, use volume keys to zoom, touch screen to focus, zoom level nine. So I've got a piece of text here, um, piece of paper, touch the screen to get it to focus in. So what the magnifier does, you just hold something to the back of the, of the phone or tablet. I mean, it's obviously, uh, it uses the camera on the back to magnify, to display a magnified image on the screen. There's a number of options that we've got at the bottom of the screen. Um, there's a light that uh, we can turn on. So if perhaps if you're in a, a dark restaurant trying to look at a, a, a menu, um, you can turn the light on uh, and that will help with that. There's some color options. There's a little color wheel that allow you just press it and it cycles through the different colors. So at the moment it's converting black text on a white background um, to yellow text on a black background. Um, but there, there are several options in there uh, to choose from. You can also freeze the, uh, the image. 
So that allows you to then move the um, phone Frozen. or tablet away from the thing that you're magnifying, and then you can independently change the zoom um, and even read out any text that's on there. So if you did frozen the image on a it's a food label or whatever it might be you can actually press a button on here and if there's any readable text the voice will read that out for you and you can also save so if you want to save this um, for, for you know looking at it again later you can press a, a button to, to save it okay so we will cancel that I'm frozen Magnifier menu, page one of two. Toolbox menu, page one of four. I mentioned the magnifier will read out text. So it's, it's, it's good for little bits of text. If you have a whole letter or bank statement or something that you want to read out, you're much better off using the separate reading machine uh, option, which is what we'll have a look at now. Reading machine, reading machine. Select an option, page one of one. There's two main options at the top of here, uh, normal mode or ignore columns mode. So normal mode is going to read the text up and down columns as you'd, as you'd expect. Ignore columns mode is, is really designed for things like bank statements where you want it to read across um, all the time and not read up and down one uh, column at a time. So we'll select normal mode. Normal mode, camera. Touch screen to take photo of text. Touch screen to take photo. Okay, so it's telling me I just need to touch screen to take a photo of the text. So you hold the um, phone or tablet over the um, over the text. Um, I generally tell people to hold it higher rather than lower, if any doubt, and then and then um, it's it uh, doesn't matter so much if you've got uh, you know the, the camera at an uh, the phone or tablet at an angle. So you hold it over the uh, image, tap the screen. Processing image. It then takes a photo. Wait. Multiple pages. Seven, however, this in fact highlights that pupils need to be taught how to be discerning and wise. So then that's converted that text on the on the on the page to uh, to on the screen in our in our um, colours. So again, if I want to convert that to line, line view, view mode, I can, and then read the text in a line as opposed to in paragraphs. Line view off. And there are also options to um, save this, and you can also put it into the notepad feature in Synaptic and edit it, then email it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite, it's quite flexible what you, can, uh, what you can do. Cancel and go back. Reading machine. Toolbox menu, page one of four. Toolbox menu, page two of four. Next, what we'll have a look at is um, two features on here the app launcher and the Play Store. So um, what these allow you to do is to add apps um, to the phone. The, the app launcher is gonna show you all the apps that are on the phone and you can pick one and run it. And we'll see that in a minute. And the Play Store option is actually an app um, and it allows you to install extra apps. Um, so we'll, I'll just very, very briefly dip into that. Play Store. Synaptic Reader resumed. So as soon as I run that Play Store, it says Synaptic Reader has resumed. So it's, read, it's now going to read out anything on this app. Um, and so I can do things in the normal. I can touch things on the screen here and it's going to read them out. Or I can use the buttons on the side to start moving through. Selected for you. Top charts. So the thing with apps, um, unlike with Synaptic Screens, is that the app, the layout of the app, will be different for different apps. So one app might have a search button at the top, and another app might have a search button in the middle, and a different app might have a search button at the bottom. So you need to um, be, have a little bit of knowledge um, in order to use these successfully. So I know on this particular screen, I need to go back. Selected for you. Signed in as Adrian Savoy's search button, search for apps and games. I know that I need to go back up the screen a little bit to find the search for apps text box so that I can type something in. Um, so that, that, like I say, that's, that's where the slight complication comes with, with apps. You just need to know a little bit about the structure of the app in order to navigate it. Well, certainly if you're going to use just speech feedback, you, you'd need to know the structure a little bit. 
Um, so if I long press the, the volume down here, the keyboard will come up, I can type in what I'm looking for, a list of apps will come and I can install um, the app that, uh, that I wish. So we'll just cancel out of this. Cancel and go back. Toolbox menu, page two of four. So once I've installed an app, it'll appear in the list in App Launcher. App Launcher. App Launcher, page one of 14. So all the apps on this device are listed, listed here. I can search if I want, or I can just scroll through. App Launcher, page two of 14. And something I'll mention at this point is, if you use an app quite a lot, I mean, for example, this the Be My Eyes app um, here, which is, which is quite, quite interesting. If you use that a lot, you can actually glue any app onto the main menu for, for quick access. So it just saves you then from coming into the you know, toolbox and app launcher. You can just glue it to the main menu instead. So I have pre-installed the NHS track and trace app thing, which I'm sure everyone is sick of hearing about, but anyway, it's, it's quite a, um, a good little example at the moment of how people, you know, suddenly need an app, didn't think they did. App launch, app launch. App launch, so app I'll just launch, search for that. App launch, app launcher, page eight, app launcher, page nine of 14. Okay, so I'll select the NHS app. My file, NHS C, start synaptic reader resume. So again, synaptics there, the, the voice says synaptic reader resume, so we know that the voice is operating in the background. Um, I've got several options now. I can touch um, a piece of text. Your app is active and scanning. And it will read it out, or I can use the gestures or I can just use the volume keys and just navigate through all the, all the text on that screen. So if I press volume down. Then you check in, but check symptoms, but read latest advice link. And then volume up. Tap check symptoms, then you check in, but your app is active and scanning. And then I just long press to operate any of those. That's only if you need speech and feedback. If, if, you, if, you, if you don't need speech feedback, you can actually turn that off for apps. And then the app will just display like this without the speech feedback and you can just press the, the options and then you still have the red cross in the top left to go back. So um, you, you've always got these, these, these two options. You can use it with speech feedback or you can just cancel that off altogether. Just use, use it normally as it were. So we'll cancel out of there. Cancel and go back. App launcher, page nine of 14. Toolbox menu, page two of four. Main menu, page four of five. So the last thing we'll have a, a brief look at is the web browser, so we can search for web pages and, and uh, read out the content. Web browser, web browser menu, page one of two. So on the web browser, we can search, we can optionally type an address, um, we can go to a home page that, that we set, um, and we can also um, have a list of favorite uh, pages um, stored here. So we'll select the search option. Search. Please type in your search words. Speech recognition mode on. Because we used speech recognition on the keyboard last time, a minute or so ago, it just assumes that, well, you used it last time, maybe you want to use it this time. So it just leaves that option on. If I don't want to, I can just turn it off. Speech recognition mode off. So I'll go um, and I'll well, will we use speech recognition? Because my spelling's terrible. Speech recognition mode on, press speak button, speak. Sausages. Sausages. I'll press the search button in the bottom left. Search. Web browser search page one of five. Okay, so it's come back with some search results. So these are Google search results that we convert into a nice synaptic format. So it's dead easy. Um, to work through these results and find the one that you that you want. Um, normally, the Google search results are a web page themselves, so you've got all the complications of navigating through that that uh, web page of results. So we strip them all off of that, put them in the nice, easy synaptic format, so that it's it's quick and easy to find the page that you want. Amazingly, I've searched for sausages and, and Brexit has come up. So I'll skip onto the next page. Web browser search page two of five. That's more like it. Um, so we've got several results here. Sausage Wikipedia, yeah. list of sausages, German sausages, sausage recipes, BBC, good food, WW. Okay, so we'll go, up, we'll go up to the top option for the Wikipedia. Sausage Wikipedia, en dot Wikipedia, loading. 
Please wet sausage Wikipedia. Loaded. Pinch and zoom the screen to change magnification. So there are two modes that the, the web browser works in there, and it's controlled by the little um, A or B button at the top, advanced or basic. So in the basic mode, it's best um, used if you're relying on magnification. So you can pinch and zoom um, that web page, and then you can scroll around and view everything on that magnified page. Um, if there's still some text that's, that's perhaps low contrast or very small still, uh, you can just tap it. This article is about the food. For other uses, see sausage disambiguation. And it will read out that, uh, that text for you. So if you're relying on magnification, basic mode is great. You pinch and zoom, you tap on text, uh, um, and, it, and it'll read it out for you. If you're relying more on um, speech feedback, then um, you switch into advanced mode. Synaptic reader resume. Uh, that, that starts up synaptic reader, and then you can move through the page using the, um, the volume keys on, this, on the side. You can still touch text. Oops. Sausage, heading one. And it reads it out, but then you can use the uh, volume keys on the side to then move. Language, watch, through. edit. But this article is about the food. For other uses, see. Now, just... sausage disambiguation. Link, sausage disambiguation. And then it just moves through all the items on that page, reading out as it goes. And if I, if I land on a link like I did there, I can just long press that volume down and it will follow that link to the, uh, to the next page. And again, you can, um, there are options to turn the speech off. So if you don't want the speech on this, um, on this screen, that can, be, that can be turned off if you just want to use it for, with magnification. Cancel and go back. Web browser search page two of five. I think that's pretty much covered all the, all the bases. Thank you for watching this demonstration. If you have any questions or would like further information, please email us at sales at synaptic.com, visit our website synaptic.com, or call us in the UK on 0191 909 7909.